All right. Um, I think let's just uh, ask you to uh, participate in the worship. By those that are able, please rise as Pastor Ergens begins our worship this morning. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Well, this is another sermon that requires a little bit of a prelude. Um, a pastor one Sunday got up to the pulpit and some disgruntled member of the congregation had slipped a piece of paper up on the pulpit and it just read in big block letters, fool. And the pastor thought about it a minute and he said, you know, I've gotten a lot of letters that people wrote and forgot to sign, but this is the first one I ever got that they signed and forgot to write. Today's sermon is a bit of a charade because uh, Pastor Ergens called me while we were out on the mission trip and he said, well, I've uh, written a sermon title for you. Well, thank you very much, Pastor. <laughs> so now the challenge for me is given his sermon title, looking for signs to see if I can't preach a sermon around that theme. So here we go. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There were two little rural churches down south of Eau Claire, let's just say along Lowe's Creek Road. And uh, one day the pastor from the one church was standing out in front of his church. He was holding a sign. It said, the end is near. The pastor in the church across the road was holding a sign too. It said, turn around. And some young Turk came flying down the road in his sports car and he saw the two pastors and he slowed down long enough to yell, why don't you religious nuts mind your own business? And he traveled on down the road and the two pastors stood there. They heard the screech of brakes and the splash of water. And the one pastor looked at the other and he said, maybe we should have put a sign up that said, bridge out. <laughs> Looking for signs. I'll give you a little challenge this morning. You think you could find your way to Wanbley, South Dakota without a map and without looking at the signs? I discovered that when you travel, it doesn't matter who you travel with, they're all very helpful. They're always helping you with the signs. Uh, Larry Clark drove the van and, and Kevin Otto and uh, John Leland were behind us and I'm sure that they were getting coached too pretty well to watch for the signs. Looking for signs. When you travel, you need to look for signs. The people of Jesus' day were looking for signs as well. The word signs is a kind of a technical term in the scripture, especially in the Gospel of John. The word in Greek is semea. We know it from the word, the English word semaphore. When you see a lighted sign, uh, that's what semaphore means, a lighted sign. No doubt many of you coming to church this morning saw a lot of lighted signs. They tell you either to stop or to go or to be cautious, don't they? Looking for signs. But there's a problem, too, with looking for signs. For one thing, we take them for granted. I don't have to, uh, you know, have anybody tell me that a hexagonal form with some letters across it and the red paint and the white outline, they just, it's like rote knowledge. I said yesterday, it's like Alex, the way Alex plays the keyboards, you know. He learns where each key is. He doesn't have to intellectualize, you know, where to put his fingers, that it becomes rote knowledge. So it is with us when we see signs and we can take those for granted. And the other thing that can happen to us is that when we take for granted those signs, we just don't see those things around us. We don't see it in one another and we don't see it in Heaven help us, people that live 700 miles away from us who are deeply impoverished. But the other problem is that we can come to depend on signs. And the technical, the technical meaning of this word in the Gospel of John, in fact, John organizes his gospel in many different ways with the I am sayings. Today, I, Jesus says, I am the bread of life, an echo of God who says, I am who I am. 
but he also organizes his gospel as a book of signs. It's not very subtle. He changes the water into wine at Cana. This is one of his signs. He raises Lazarus. He, he, he restores the sight of blind Bartimaeus. All of these are signs, and we call them in English miracles. But do we need a miracle to believe? Or can miracles come in very small packages? See? Now, for us who went on this mission trip, I'll tell you what, none of us ever imagined getting into a van or a car at 5 o'clock last Sunday morning that we the mission trip would start way before we got to Wanbley, South Dakota. As we traveled, I don't know if you know this, but this is the big weekend in Sturgis, South Dakota, the big motorcycle weekend. So, you know, as we were going west, I mean, we were accompanied by just throngs of Harley Davidsons headed west. And when we got out by Chamberlain, if you know this, the geography, as we came over the hill, suddenly there was a backup of traffic. This is where the where the Interstate 90 crosses the, the Missouri. There was a sudden backup of traffic and all of us screeched to a halt, but there was one motorcyclist that couldn't stop in time. And he, right within the view of, of our group, he ran into the back end of a young woman's car. And, and of course, his motorcycle went one way and he went the other and he rolled across the pavement. He actually rolled into the back of one of our vehicles, and there he was in the ditch. And some of our people along have medical background, and they jumped out, and so did all the rest of the, both the adults and the kids to see what we could do. We spent maybe a half hour, 45 minutes, and not only seeing to his needs as the ambulance and the, the, the highway patrol came, but seeing to his needs, and then seeing to the needs of that young woman whose car he had run into. It was still, it was still able to be driven, but you know, we had to get out that famous remedy duct tape and, and duct tape her fender back together so she could continue her trip all the way down to Colorado back to school. And we could reassure her and reassure this young man and he had head injuries and he had a very serious injury to his arm and that night we prayed for Sarah, the driver, and we prayed for Ron, the motorcyclist. It was, a, it was a sign. It was a sign that God put in our path on the way to go out and do this kind of official mission work. God put an unofficial opportunity in our midst. And if we hadn't been looking for signs, we wouldn't have recognized it. And throughout the week, there were signs in many different ways. Signs of God's what the youth works, which is the organizi organizing, uh, or the organization that organizes these mission trips. And by, by the way, I, we have to have a shout out, don't we, for uh, Whitney and, and Josh and Adam and Jess and Lindsay, all, all who represented youth works and did such great work with us and Bible studies and challenging activities. But we, we, had to we had to start to recognize right there on the highway the upside down kingdom. That was the theme for the week. God's upside down kingdom in Jesus Christ that comes. You know there's a book by a woman named Barbara Hinchcliffe it's called a Sunday in the 30s, and in it, uh, an atheist by the name of Uncle Frank gives voice to this sentiment. He says, all I know about Jesus is he never used a gun, he had no use for money, he never burned anybody at the stake, and by God, he never turned his back on anybody. This was the proclamation of an atheist. All the more so for us as, as people of faith that we recognize the Jesus who is on our own level. This is the miracle of the gospel that God sends Jesus Christ down to our level in the face of a little child for whom some of these people over here read 
We would have reading club, we would have kids club, we would have mission projects, painting and mowing and, and weed whacking and you name it. They, one, of our, one of our people is pretty gifted with, you know, uh, carpentry and plumbing and that sort of thing. And, and there, there were several people who needed some plumbing projects done and he was able to do that. And in the face of all these people, we could see signs. Signs of God's upside down kingdom. I could look at that blister on my hand, and that's a rare thing on a preacher's hand. Or I could wipe the sweat of my brow, and that's even more rare, preacher's sweat, you know. But all of these things were a sign to us. And the people of Jesus' day, they were looking for signs, but for self-aggrandizement, for, for signs that would do something for them. They wanted the bread, you know, that never ran out. Even in the Roman, Roman Empire, the, the, the leaders, the, the, the emperors knew that if you just gave the people bread and circuses, that they would be satisfied. This is what the people of Jesus' day were looking for, just the sign of bread that feeds the body. But Jesus came not just to give that kind of bread, but to give bread for the soul. And I'm so thankful that they would drag me along with them on this trip, but I'm also thankful that I got to witness, not just adults, but young people, who talked to the kids and talked to other adults about Jesus Christ. They witnessed. They witness to one who not only feeds the, feeds the body, but feeds the soul. And it'd be so easy for us to, you know, think that we're just such wonderful people that, you know, that we would give up a week to go out there and do all these menial tasks. But you know what? You know, Will Durant, who wrote The Outline of History, he said one time, he said, some of these people setting out to clean up the world ought to start off by taking a bath themselves. That's what we had to do. We had to, we had to get into that mentality that we don't, we're, we're not coming here to change the world overnight, but that we will get so much more back than we give. We met some wonderful people. One of the things that, one of the things, and I know, I don't want to steal any thunder from these other folks, but I tell you what, we met some wonderful people, and most of the wonderful people that are very effective in the community there, and by the way, the community is Ogallala, Lakota, and they prize nothing more than relationships. And, and by the way, you know that you're in with them if they smile. There was a guy that was a cook at the school, they called him Beef. How's that for a nickname? Somebody asked him, How, why do they call you Beef? He said, well, everybody called my dad Beef, so I'm Beef. I'm Beef Jr. The true story was is that his dad rustled cattle from the ranchers to feed the starving Indians. That's why he was called Beef. And I walked up to him one day and I said, you know, we got something in common. You're Beef and I'm Pork. <laughs> and he smiled, he smiled. When they smile at you, they, then, then you know then you know that there is some kind of rela relationship established. I, I rarely saw any of them laugh really out loud. Very humble people. But it was this opportunity that was so meaningful for us. We met one night, we had an activity where a man named Jerome, who was an elder in the community, came and talked for an hour and a half. Our kids hung on his every word. And they went out there on Thursday, on Wednesday and Thursday, and they worked for him because he's the one in the community that doesn't rely on the government to take care of other people. He does it himself. He's become a program unto himself. In fact, some of the other people in the community don't like him too much because he's too way too effective. Jerome was a sign to me of the upside down kingdom. You see? And this, this is what we seek to, seek to experience ourselves on a Sunday morning in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. 
We want to engage in God's upside-down kingdom, a place where we're not just going to feed the body, but we want to feed people's soul. We want to witness to Jesus Christ because Christ can change everything. As I saw in the eyes of one of our, our participants who's not given to being uh, overly sentimental, and he just looked at me and he said, Rolf, I'll never be the same after this. That's what God does. That's what God does in Christ. And for us, and we'll, we'll regale you with stories of how we spent the night out at a 38-foot cross. Can you imagine out on the prairies of western South Dakota? A rancher just got this idea. I'm going to build a 38-foot cross. He built it in his, his family cemetery. It's built, <laughs> it's just fun to stand there and look at it because it's built out of old car parts. And I could see, you know, there were spoked wheels, and you would have gone crazy, Pastor Ergens. You could have found a lot of parts for your Ford. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, I saw, you know, radiator fans, and I saw jacks and jack handles. I, I saw every kind of part that you, but it had been crafted into a cross that stands against the western sky, a sign. A sign. I don't think anybody that was there that night didn't recognize the sign of that cross. And the last night we were there, we had an opportunity to wash one another's feet. Now we're Lutherans, you know. We don't do that kind of stuff. You know, communion's one thing, and you know, if you really want to push the envelope, we'll have a baptism once in a while. But washing each other's feet, wow. And there wasn't a dry eye. Because that's real servanthood. That's a sign. And while the rest of the world just wants to leave God out of the game, huh? they want to just leave God out. You remember the story of the catcher who had a superstitious batter come to the plate in a pro game one time, and he made the sign of the cross in the dirt, and the catcher reached out and crossed it out and looked at the batter and said, let's leave God out of this game. That's what the world wants to do. While I was there, I had a little radio, and I'd listen, try to keep up a little bit of what was going on in the outside. What was the big story about some dentist from the cities who went over and killed an African lion? Now, I think that guy's an idiot. But I was in the midst of, in the midst of people who really, that should be the headline. The headline should be people of God who have touched others' lives with the presence of Christ. You see? This, this is, this is the, the sign we were out looking for, not one that said turn left or turn right or exit or entrance or speed limit or any of those. We were looking for sign, and we got that sign right away with that motorcycle accident, and then it just unfolded all the way through the week. It was exhausting, but it was a great, great thing. It was a great thing for us, but, you know, we don't come back here thinking that we have all the answers to the problems of an Indian reservation or even all the answers for some of the problems in Eau Claire. And believe me, the Indian Reservation isn't any different than our, cult, than, our, than our community. One of the big problems is meth. You could just see it, right? You could see the problem. You just look at, they had a beautiful school, and you could see the graduating classes up through about the early 80s were all turned out and wearing their fancy duds, and after that it was just a bunch of gangsters. Drugs. I'm not standing up here as, as a person who thinks I've got answers for everything or how people can overcome drugs, but I know that Jesus Christ is the bread of life that comes down from heaven. And if I'm tempted to go out there and think that, that, that well, why doesn't God just wave a wand and make everything better, perform some miracle, that ain't going to happen. 
But you know what is going to happen? People who went on this mission trip and people from this congregation are going to recognize the signs. The signs that God is at work amongst us. Huh? God is at work amongst us. God, is the, God has sent his son as the living bread that comes down from heaven and gives us hope, not just food for the body, but food for the soul. So on that last night, you know, just like here at home, you know, you guys have to put up with my silly stories. So on the last night when we did that foot washing, and I, I don't think I'll ever forget that night. It's one of those, by the way, one of those experiences that it just never leaves you. But I got up to tell one of my silly stories. It had to do with a, with a gospel mission like we have here in Eau Claire. And there was one particular guy that worked at that mission. His name was Joe. And he did everything for everybody. He just helped all of these indigent people. He helped them out in every way he could. And everybody in the mission looked up to him. And one night they had a service. And a visiting preacher was there, and he preached, you know, a rousing kind of uh, revivalist kind of sermon. And afterwards, they had a time of prayer, and one of those indigent guys came up, and they heard him praying over there. He was kneeling at the altar rail, and he was praying, Lord, make me more like Joe. Lord, make me more like Joe. And the preacher walked up, and he said to him, Don't you mean make me more like Jesus? And the guy looked at him, and he said, Is he like Joe? I hope after we left that place that there were some people who said, Lord, make me more like those people from Saving Grace. Make me more like those people from Mankato, E-Free. And they were a great bunch of people that we got to work with. Make me more like them. And that you ask the question, are they like Jesus? I think they were. Because the signs are all there. All lined up. And all you have to do now is go looking for signs. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. Thy, thy will be done. done. On, on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.